there were two Bali Chuva yeshivas for men at that point, 1970. And we were just sitting around thinking, we have a large Chabad house with many bedrooms. And we were thinking, these young men who are going to become the Bali Chuva, who are they going to marry? <laughs> Yeah. So we said, you know what, let's make something for women. And just like that, we started it. No preparation, no research, no sur surveys, no studies, <laughs> not even a plan. We just invited college women from the Midwest to come spend their summer. It took off and hasn't stopped since 1970. We must have... 30,000 women by now passed through that program. Mm. So I'm sure the program has developed a lot since you, those invites. Yeah. We've become a little more responsible. <laughs> <laughs> so how did, like, how did it, how did the, the program evolve? How, and what was the program? It was a crash course on, on Yiddish. On Yiddish it wasn't a yeshiva. This was their vacation time. It's, it wasn't a, so some stayed for a week, some stayed for a month. And it was all ages. It turned out that it wasn't just college women. Grandmothers and teenagers, and it was just a big mix of any Jewish woman. Nobody checked, nobody asked, nobody did any, any. You're Jewish, you want to learn? Come on. And they came because it was a wild and crazy time. Wow. And um, is there, could, is, is there like a, a secret to like the program of, of the crash course? I mean, it's. Can you give us a crash course in three minutes? Like crash course of the crash course. Yeah. Tanya. Tanya. Mm. What's in Tanya. That's so uh, revolutionary that yeah. To help someone tap into the Yiddish guy. You know, you can do, you can do things uh, starting from the detail and then getting to the claw, you know, to the to the core, where you start from the core and eventually get to the detail. Most most schools, most yeshivas, start with the detail. If you happen to be curious and a little philosophical, and maybe want to dig a little deeper, you force them to go to the core of you know, the fundamentals. With adults, you can't do that. So. When these women came, you couldn't start with, you know, learn how to say a bracha. Why? Why am I saying this? Who am I saying it to? So you couldn't just say, make a bracha. <laughs> here, here, wa wash nagel vaser. <laughs> What's a nagel vaser? <laughs> right. Right, right, right. So you had to start with fundamentals. And Tanya is the fundamentals. What is a Jew? What is God? What is Avedah Sashem? What is a mitzvah? What's a godly soul? What's godly? What, you know, the real fundamental issues. And these are the things that most of the college students at that time were desperate for that kind of information because they sit in school year after year learning stuff that is completely irrelevant to them. They're never going to have to use it again, the information. And they were frustrated. And here all of a sudden, Every class, every page, every conversation, down to the you know, MS and to the fundamentals of why we're here and what we're doing. The first group that came, 18 women, the first, the first summer. What brought them is that we sent out a little flyer and it said, come learn the purpose of life. And they walked in and said, you know the purpose of life? <laughs> it's like, nobody knows the purpose of life. And then when they learned it, it was, wow, they couldn't. Where are those, where are those 18 women right now? Well, now their granddaughters are coming to the program. It's incredible. Did you, did you feel throughout the process that, I mean, obviously you were um, observant, but did you feel yourself becoming more tapped into Yiddishkeit while you're giving over? Infinitely more. There's nothing more inspiring than inspiring. Hmm. That's a good quote. <laughs> wow more so and I mean that's how I got to know Tanya I really? thought I knew it I hey you. come on I'll teach you Tanya whoa 
I discover Tanya by teaching it. Because their questions and their reactions, and you get a very different perspective, and you realize how this is you know, this is not a nusach. You know, all that language, you know, you make a vessel for godliness. You know, what? What? What's a vessel? What's you can you can't fake it. You can't skim when you're dealing with searchers. Seekers, so literally, literally, no, no, guzma whatsoever. We started studying nine o'clock in the morning, and ended eight o'clock in the morning. Wow. Around the clock, day after day. That's right. <laughs> Gray before my time. It was amazing. We once had a guest tell us that in the 1970s or the 80s, it was very easy to get people to become from because it was just like they were searching it. They were searching for it. Um, you showed it to them and they're like, yeah, I'm in. Do you the, find the hippie movement? Well, and it was like the hippie movement around that time. Right. right? Do you find mm -hmm. that over the years it's, you know, it's more difficult to do such a thing? There was a challenge back then, too. They were ready to accept and ready to do and ready to join because they weren't committed to anything else. They didn't have a job. They didn't have a school schedule. They didn't have... You can talk to a woman, just first first introduction. Want to come study? Where? Minnesota. Yeah. Hmm. Hop a plane? Yeah, we'll go to Minnesota. Why not? For how long? I don't know, three weeks, a month. Okay, fine. People don't do that today. No. <laughs> yeah, they picked up their little backpack and then they're there. And they're, and they're ready to stay for a month, two months, a year. That's months. why it was easier. It was much easier. But that was part of the problem. Too easy. Is this real? Or is this part of their exploration of the, uh, the possibilities in life? Is it going to last is it is it deep? Is it true? Because you know it's easy to get excited when you have nothing else. Easy come, going easy on. go. Yeah. yeah. So the amazing thing is that out of the eighteen women, fifteen of them went off to Crown Heights to continue learning, and their kids and their grandkids, it stuck. It's beautiful. I'm sure the Rebbe was getting reports out of this development out of Minnesota. Do you remember any uh, conversation or, or interaction with the Rebbe that, where, where he acknowledged what you were doing out there? Oh, we asked the Rebbe if we could name it after his mother. And there was, there was nothing named after Rebbe Tzanchana. It was, it was, a, it was a, a bold thing to even ask. And the Rebbe absolutely approved and agreed and and then when we would write, you know, hope this is a nachas to the Rebbe and, the Rebbe's, and his mother's name, and the Rebbe would always, yeah, it, it meant something. That it was named after his, his mother meant something to him. And we saw, we saw the amazing blessing that, the inspiration that came and the, uh, the part, part of it was cathartic. When you have a messed up life, you got nothing going for you. The family doesn't really have um, a philosophy, or a, you know, it's just. And they grow up like that, and then they go through all sorts of experiences, and they get hurt, and they get. So there was a lot of healing going on, besides the Yiddishkeit, or let's say the Yiddishkeit was healing for them, and it was it was almost miraculous. Look, I, I was 21 going on 22. I had never spoken to a girl in my life. Hmm. And all of a sudden... You're teaching. You have a girl's school. Which was not even the plan. I, was, I wasn't going to teach. But when they said, hey, we got to learn more, they were not content with the three hours we were going to give them. Because we thought, it's summertime, vacation time, <coughs> they'll do a little shopping, sightseeing. Oh, not these women. <laughs> No, <laughs> sightseeing, shopping. What's next? Babysitting? 
No, not these women. These were the radical political activists who were trying to burn down universities out of their frustrations and uh, they weren't going to go shopping. <laughs> I, I want to fast forward a little to it's good to know dot org. Similarly, before where you explained everything to us, could you do that again? With it's, it's good to know that it's a great domain purchase. Great domain, awesome. Yeah. So one of the things we did in Beis Chana, which was also um, kind of new, we started producing Torah tapes from the classes at Beis Chana. So we called it Thoughts at Beis Chana. Um, the tapes kind of. Uh, Actual tapes? Actual, yeah. Okay. Anyway, it went from one form to another, and then it became discs, and, and now nobody has discs. So we needed to upgrade the whole process. Yeah. And did did you feel the content changed when it became like a website? Did, did it the actual content shift as the medium shifted? It became universal because you can't control who's listening. Right. So you have a very large non-Jewish listenership. Almost every African country. So yeah, you have to speak a little differently. But the amazing thing is, when you're talking fundamentals, it doesn't matter who you're talking to. The same, the same fundamentals are relevant to the most Haredi guy and to you know, to a total non-Jew. What are like the average go-to topics that people um, are searching for answers for that they don't really know the answer to. So just from practical experience, the, the, the talk that got almost 2 million hits was about life after death. Not exactly uh, your everyday practical, <laughs> but people are fascinated and they, and they want to know and they need to know and There's, there's a, a lot of disillusionment with religion, all religion. And people are looking for something to believe, something to... So they're looking every, from every, every country, every culture, every... So what is, a, what is a, a, a really relevant topic? God's purpose. That there's a God, you don't have to convince people. I think 70% of the human population believe in God. Hmm. What they think of God, that's a different story. <laughs> right. But they all... When you say God's purpose, God's purpose for doing things? For creating the world. For creating the world. That's fundamental, no? It's intimidating. And if you don't get a good answer and the question is better than the answer... <laughs> That's very discouraging. It's like, oh, it's no. Down, yeah. So the whole thing is right. terrible to so think. What's, what's the good answer? Um, first of all, the mitzvah to get to know God is such a neglected mitzvah. Most people don't even know there is such a mitzvah. Yediyas Hashem, they don't think it's a mitzvah. They think it's some kind of a philosophy course or something. But it is. It's, in the Rambam, it's the first mitzvah. To get to know. If you enjoyed this conversation or this topic and you're looking for more information or you want to hear it again from another angle, there is a way to do that. And that is in this book. It's all there. Order it from Amazon. You can read it, reread it, and share it. We have a Sunday night program for VIPs that you might be interested in. It's informal, it's questions and answers, it's conversation. It's really relaxed, it's really pleasant, enjoyable, informative, and uh, kind of community-like. It's a Sunday night program, there's a um, Wednesday morning program for the VIPs, and there's a Wednesday night program. All of it 
just conversation, casual, laid back, unscripted. So join us, take a look, click uh, the link below and see which, which of the three suits you best and join us for some enjoyable conversation.